today my topic is absorption refrigeration system once this system was very much popular so i am explaining this system this is the total diagram diagram of absorption refrigeration system what are the main parts in an absorption refrigeration system this is the most important part its name is generator then it is separator and rectifier third one condenser fourth evaporator fifth absorber another one part is there so heat shrinker heat is absorbed and before that controlling device is there between condenser and evaporator so these are the total parts now about the function uh, <coughs> generator what is the function of generator in generator ammonia and water aqua ammonia that comes down from absorber to generator due to gravity it comes into the generator and heat energy is applied at the bottom section of the generator this heat energy may be coal by coal or burning wood kerosene flame gas flame anyhow we have to apply heat after getting heat this ammonia and water will be vaporized and that will move upward and it will finally enter into the next part separator or rectifier in separator what happens this is a very fine metallic net and in this net water vapor and, and ammonia both gets obstructions and water vapor will change into water that is high temperature water and this water will drain towards the absorber and before absorber heat sinker is there and this heat sinker will absorb heat and finally that hot water will become cold cold means not so much cold that will come at normal temperature atmospheric temperature finally due to gravity it comes down and finally enters into the absorber now for ammonia what happens ammonia vapor cannot be changed into liquid state so easily as water vapor can change and so the ammonia will move upward and it will enter into the condenser as you know the function of a condenser is to absorb heat from vapor refrigerant so the vapor refrigerant will be condensed and it will be changed into liquid state so condenser is that part where ammonia vapor can be changed into liquid state while the refrigerant coming out through the outlet at that time it is almost totally in liquid state after that small tubing is attached between condenser and evaporator and it is called controlling device whole amount of liquid refrigerant can't enter into the evaporator and if sufficient space is not available then that ammonia liquid ammonia cannot be changed into vapor state so while the controlled liquid enters into the evaporator at that time it will be changed gradually from liquid state uh, to vapor state by absorbing heat from the coil and its surrounding places so the coil and the enclosed space will become cold not only that and another thing hydrogen is also introduced to ammonia for reducing its partial pressure according to the laws of dalton's partial pressure we know when two or more gases are mixed to each other their individual pressure will be decreased and when the pressure of ammonia is more reduced at that time it will be able it will able to change into vapor state more easily and rapidly 
so while the repiant comes out from the evaporator coil at that time ammonia is changed into ammonia vapor and by mixing with hydrogen and these two repiants all together comes in uh, absorber already normal temperature water is coming down coming uh, down and uh, finally it enters into the absorber as we know water and ammonia both are very mixable ammonia can be well mixed into normal temperature water so while ammonia enters into it ammonia is dissolved into water and uh, it forms aqua ammonia again due to gravity it comes down and enters into the generator and the hydrogen what happens about the hydrogen as you know hydrogen is the lightest gas in the universe so hydrogen will move upward and here diameter of this tube is less and here diameter is more so space will be available at the top portions and through these portions hydrogen will move upward and from here it will go up and finally it will enter into the evaporator so cycle of hydrogen is restricted at this place evaporator absorber again again evaporator so at this portion hydrogen is circulated and ammonia ammonia circulation is the maximum from absorber to generator generator to separator separator to condenser condenser to controlling device controlling device to evaporator and finally absorber so this are the cycle of ammonia water vapor water and from generator to separator separator to heat sinker heat sinker to absorber so these are the cycle now about the uh, applied energy obviously heat energy is applied in this system where conventional electrical energy is available at that place this kind of system is not in use uh, at that place mechanical refrigeration system is used and uh, another main thing here iron and steel tubes are used instead of copper in conventional refrigeration system we generally use copper tubes but here we can't use copper tubes because ammonia is highly corrosive on copper so copper tube will be damaged very soon and it will get leakage that's why we can't use copper tubes so instead of copper iron or steel pipes are used in this system so uh, this is the main feature otherwise uh, where we will use and once it, it was very popular but nowadays nowadays this kind of system has not so much in use because electrical energy is available everywhere and that electrical energy uh, where we use what we, we get electrical energy at in those places we will use mechanical refrigeration system so uh, i have already discussed about the function and main parts i have already told you uh, generator and separator or rectifier condenser controlling device evaporator absorber and heat sinker refrigerant three refrigerants and strong refrigerant that is ammonia and beside ammonia other refrigerants are hydrogen and water and uh, definitions if we say so it is that kind of refrigeration system which is operated by heat energy instead of electrical energy here main part is generator which converts the aqua ammonia into ammonia vapor and water vapor by applied energy another important thing if we want to make a unit of 165 liter Uh, refrigerating system at that time the amount of this three refrigerants will be ammonia that is 1 pound and uh, water will be 2.5 pound and hydrogen 0.03 pound we can we can easily convert that pound into gram so 1 pound is equal to 453.6 gram roughly ammonia quantity will be 450 grams and whereas water 
what are 2.5 into 450 so 1125 gram of water will be required and the hydrogen uh, 0.03 pound very less quantity of hydrogen will be required if we mix all this at that time we will get the uh, optimum pressure and proper cooling and cooling will almost depends upon the applied heat uh, the intensity of heat will influence the cooling efficiency when the amount of heat is less at the time the cooling will be slightly uh, at the less rate and when heat intensity is high at the time cooling will be faster so uh, I think you have understand this one and another kind of refrigeration system that is uh, thermoelectrical refrigeration system I will say today and uh, you will see that this kind of refrigeration system has a great effect and but some limitations are there and I will also say what are the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of system. So today up to this again I will say about the thermoelectrical refrigeration system. Okay, thank you.